الحمد لله الحمد لله على عظيم نعمه والشكر له على جزيل فضله أنعم علينا بنعمة الأبناء وجعلهم مسؤولية وجعلهم مسؤولية الأمهات والآباء وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فعسيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد أيها المسلمون The brothers and sisters in Islam I've been asked to speak about a topic a topic of big importance Two days ago there was the international day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking and this is a day that was set into play by the United Nations and the reason why they put this place this day into play was because drug abuse is an epidemic an epidemic means a, a problem that has reached global proportions so we find amongst the most traded things in the world when we look across global trade we will find ranking at number three is what are known as the drugs the drugs mukhadarat in Arabic the hard drugs that lead to substance abuse things like heroin things like cocaine and we find that the people who are involved in such trafficking find more and more novel and interesting ways to bring about such drugs to give exposure to such drugs and most of the people who get exposed to drugs initially at the primary stage of their the very first time they try these drugs are children children who've not yet passed the age of 18 and when they take these drugs as a one-off, usually through circles of friends, this sets into play a cycle of addiction and a cycle or a pattern of what is known as substance abuse. So today's khutbah is about the dangers of, of such drugs and the role of us as parents and wider communities. But more to the point, Today's khutbah is discussing the very nature of addiction itself. It wants to go to the very root of the problem. What is it that causes addiction? One of the best talks you can see on YouTube. Nowadays, we have to reference YouTube on the member. It's part of the modern age. One of the best talks you can see on YouTube on the topic of addiction is a talk by someone known as Dr. Gabor Mate. Dr. Gabor Mate is one of the world's leading experts in treating addiction and he specifically treats addiction of drugs, heroin, cocaine and the like. And this is a TED talk. Many of you will know what TED talks are. They're talks given on the stage with a presentation. And one of the things he says is he says, why is it that some people are more prone to being addicted to such drugs than others? And why is it that when every single person who comes to him to treat his addiction, he says at the root of the addiction is something else. At the root of the addiction is pain. Pain. 
It's not physical pain. It's emotional, psychological pain. And many of the people describe that pain as a sense of lack, a sense of not having connection, love, belonging. If you could put a word on that sense of connection and love and belonging, we would call it rahma in Arabic. The Prophet ﷺ once kissed some children and an, an Arabi, a Bedouin, said to him, how can you kiss children? I have 10 children. And I don't, you know, this is, what is this? And the Prophet ﷺ, he was making a, a, a claim because the sense of muru'ah, the sense of manliness was, I don't show my emotions. I don't do this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, is there anything in my deen, in this deen, for someone who doesn't have rahmah in his heart? This deen requires us to be people of connection. This deen requires us to be people who caress and comfort, especially the children, because children come from the rahm. Children come from the womb, the source of rahmah. This has been named, the same name of rahmah is from rahm. And in that rahm, they're, they're, they're protected and feel comfort, which by the way, if the mother during her term of pregnancy is still in a state of anxiety, is still in a state of depression, then the child still senses that even in the womb. This is one of the things that this Dr. Gabor Mate says. He says that he's noticed even with studying, studies done by pediatricians that children who are born who cry, 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 all they're doing is crying. In fact, it was found that most of the children who were born to Jewish parents post-Holocaust, when it had just ended, it was almost a pattern. All of the children were crying. This was a pattern detected. And one of them said, well, the children didn't experience the Holocaust. The children didn't experience Hitler. And the answer was they did experience that felt sense through the mother. And that's why it's very important and our deen gives an importance to those months. But that need for connection doesn't end. Once the child comes into this world, those of you who have children, those of you who've had young children, and from the very beginning you'll see that even though they can barely move, they're on the bed, they can barely do anything. If you sit next to a child and you're in your internet mode, the child will pick up when you're really giving attention when you're really wanting to be connected, and when it is you're just clicking away and you're not really there. The child will pick it up. The child be becomes disturbed if you're not giving it attention. And this nature of connection is a nature of what we say, the fitra itself. The fitra, that natural state, which is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has born every child upon, returns back to that natural witnessing of alastu bi rabbikum am i not your lord and in that witnessing of allah's rububiyyah his lordship it wasn't a separated rububiyyah rububiyyah it was a lordship that is always acting because rububiyyah can only come through ubudiyyah your state of naqs ubudiyyah means a flatness your state of nothingness can only be completed through iqrar or rububiyyah through recognizing how he is completing you how he is raising you rububiyyah means to raise you raise you raise you raise you in a state of concern in a halatin to a state of perfection so many of these people who are undergoing treatment for heroin some of them describe that first experience of taking heroin. And they say it felt like the mother's caress. It redeemed some of that pain. And this is another thing that comes in the studies of addiction. And usually they involve looking at the physiology of behind addiction. The people who are prone to getting addicted with this biochemical drugs, are usually people who, even neurologically, even in their own brains, those chemicals that are secreted, 
There are things called dopamine. There are things literally which is that rush or that things that are connected. These are, this is, you know, this is not my field, so many of you are physiologists here, but the, the endogens, that system of the body that literally secretes hormones and chemicals that regulate and connect to feelings of love, feelings of being protected, feelings of being comforted. They are physiologically, most of the people who are geared towards addiction, they are physiologically in a state of depletion. They don't, they don't have those things. And so when this drug comes, it mirrors that effect. So you find they have what's known as a dopamine rush. They take those drugs and the, and the dopamine rises and they feel a sense of love. And so what's driving a lot of the physical addiction behind these drugs is a sense of psychological or emotional lack. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُعَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, the hearing, the sight, and the heart. About all of these we will be questioned. We've been given so many things by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in our own confusion and the effects of these drugs is they override. They, they override the intellect, but the person feels a state of bliss. But look what happens after that. The body now realizes or makes the connection that this drug is what gives me relief. This drug makes me feel better. And so the body seeks more and more and more. But the more and more drugs they take, the less and less powerful that rush becomes. But now they're caught in a cycle and they think the only way I can save myself, the only way I can get myself out of this pain is by taking more and more. But the more and more they're getting, the more bankrupt they're becoming, the more desperate they're becoming and they get caught in a cycle. This is the logic of the addict. Brothers and sisters, we should feel compassion for people who are addicted to drugs. And we don't just feel, the way to feel compassion is to empathize. Empathize, empathize means to literally feel what they're feeling. And why should we feel compassion for people who take drugs and are addicts? Is because I'm pretty sure most of us here are addicts too. Addiction to drugs is just a symptom. How many of you here are addicts to the internet? How many of you know the definition of an addiction is when you find you can't stop? How many of you are ad addicts to a story of what you need that will finally give you happiness in your life? And it just so happens that what you need isn't Allah. The definition of an, addict, of an addict doesn't start and stop with drugs. The definition of an addict is someone who time and time again is repeatedly looking after something that he thinks will give him that feeling of peace, that he thinks will give him that feeling of love, that he thinks will give him that feeling of contentment. But it's a wham, it's a delusion. It's an oasis that he thinks he'll finally arrive at but all he finds is greater thirst, greater desire. And if we take out those who have fallen into drugs, biochemical, how much of us are addicts emotionally? How much of us are addicts psychologically? Addicted? The world's greatest addiction would not be hard drugs. The world's greatest addiction would be distracting ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that Gabor Mate has found in the cure to addiction, and we could extend that to an addiction of all forms, is to first bring compassion. Because that sense of being disconnected from the mother, from the family, from the world, is ultimately a sense of being disconnected from Allah. And to allow compassion, and then to learn to face that pain. What is that pain really telling me? What is that lack? I lack something. That person with the drugs may not know what it is he lacks because all he knows, 
And this is the way our world treats symptoms, usually in the mainstream sense. Quick relief. You've got a pain here. Take a tablet. All they're doing is acting on the logic that the world is giving them. You've got a pain. Take a tablet. You're disturbed. Here, watch this program. Watch this. Watch that. Game of Thrones is finished. HBO will come out with a prequel. Don't worry. World Cup started. There'll be another one. There'll be another one. There'll be another one. But I can't sit. I need to distract myself. Don't worry. Malls. More shopping. How many of us are addicted to consumerism? How many of us buy, not from a position of what we need, but from a position of, I need to buy, I need, I need, I need, I need the latest, I need, I need, I need. And this only true because the logic of the addict has been taken on a global level. Charles Eisenstein says the logic of our financial system, or actually he says the logic of interest, we would say riba is the logic of an addict. It assumes always and forever you can constantly continue this habit without a sense of what cost it's bringing, without a sense of how you're destroying yourself and your relationships and the world. How is the logic of interest doing that? If you watch that talk by Gabor Mate, he connects the dots, maybe not as explicitly. Why are we, why are we constantly depleting the rainforests? Why are we polluting the, the rivers? Why is every single country on, uh, in this world, in an economic sense, premised on GDP having to rise, constantly having to grow? What constantly grows? What in this world is constantly growing? Because every time these digits are rising, so-called growth is happening, this growth has to go into something being bought and sold. So if that rainforest stays as a rainforest, it's not becoming money, is it? That's why we have to cut it down, turn it into limber, so we can find all these chemicals from it, and they can go into your toothpaste, and you can shop at Carrefour or Lulu's or wherever. That has to become money, has to become progress, has to become growth. But do you know what's happening? Our economic system, and it is a system, we can redesign it. If we wanted to, we could have redesigned a system without the premise of riba, without its bedrock being riba. But our system, which is the system of an addict, a system of addiction, a system of money that constantly has to grow, our addictive financial global economic system requires growth to survive. You know that? Because money itself, and I can't go into this in the member, I'm not going to go into this. Do your own reading. Go research. It's all available now, and it's not even a conspiracy theory. All the central banks speak about this is how money comes into existence. Money comes into existence as debt, with more debt having to be paid back. The debt that has to be paid back doesn't exist. And so you're constantly in a cycle of creating more money, but there's more debt. More money and there's more debt. More money and there's more debt. That's why the world's so-called richest country, America, is also the world's most indebted country. And that would only make sense if you understand how money comes into existence. But this money, this riba, requires growth to survive because we've already gone so far from this world that if we pull the plug the whole economic system would collapse now what does that mean it's become a system that requires growth to survive the only thing that mirrors that is the cancer cell in the body the cancer an addictive cell that has to ultimately grow even if it will destroy or kill the body so why did i go into that let's not put down those poor people who are addicted with drugs. They're just mirroring what our financial system is saying. They're mirroring our own patterns. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَعِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ That itminan, that peace, that rest, that freedom that you're seeking, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ You will only get it with remembering Allah. Dhikr, remembering what you already knew. Remembering that, alastu bi rabbikum. But you see, most people don't want dhikr. They say, ala bi liquor. <laughs> Is it not with liquor? Alcohol. I can just give myself a bit of a break. Gabor Mate in that talk speaks about the biography of one of these Rolling Stones guitarists and I find it interesting all of these guys who are big part players in this entertainment industry the rock and roll pioneers said 
my taking heroin was just moments of escape from myself. Kurt Cobain, the great Nirvana singer, dies in a heroin overdose. I don't even know half these people's names. Lenny Kravitz. Why do they end up, despite this great big people out there, crowds chanting, we love you, but they're empty inside? What is that emptiness? And why can't they just be with themselves? Escape from myself? Because their own selves have started saying, Ma hada. You were not created for this. Ibrahim ibn Adham was a king, a great king. And he went once, he went hunting. And there was this deer. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people a bigger reminder than others. He liked hunting. We might like watching shows upon shows on HBO. <laughs> but unlike Ibrahim ibn Adham, when all of a sudden he's about to throw and kill the deer by throwing an arrow at the deer, the deer turns around and this is karama, this can happen. The deer says, Ibrahim, ma lihada. Ibrahim, you weren't created for this empty play. And he gave up everything, gave up the world, gave up and became a great Zahid. And we know much about his life now, a great spiritual person in Islam. No one in HBO is going to turn on all of a sudden Netflix you're watching and an ad comes and says, how's your salah going? How's your heart with Allah? Where are you with Allah? No one's going to tell you that. So you have to tell yourself that. Every person is looking upon himself, even if he's going to make an excuse. I'm not saying throw everything out. I'm not saying throw the TV out. Nowadays, the TV isn't the problem. The problem is your smartphone. I'm not saying throw it all out. I'm saying if you can't bring a sense of priority to your lives about what you want, See, that's the big thing about addiction. What is it that you want? Because if we're not caught with the drugs, but we're caught with other forms of addiction, we'll never realize what is it that you really want? What is it that you really want? فاللهم احفظ اولادنا وبارك لنا في ذرياتنا ووفقنا لطاعتك اجمعين وطاعه رسولك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الامين وطاعه من امرت بطاعته عملا بقوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول اولي الامر منكم نفعني الله اياكم بالقران العظيم وبسنه نبيه الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا انه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى تابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين one of the very interesting hadiths in Sahih Bukhari the Prophet says, Allah is amazed. And Allah is amazed means not that he doesn't know what's happening, it's part of his ajab, is the greatness of his creation. Allah is amazed by people who enter Jannah with salasil, who enter Jannah with chains. Obviously, when they're interpreting this hadith, many of the people said, no one really enters Jannah in chains. This is reference to those whose lives changed in this world through chains. Some of them took literally people who discover Islam in captivity. There were people who were tied after Badr. They were tied in Masjid al Nabawi to the pillars. And some of those people by being caught, caught and tied became Muslim. This is one of the interpretations. Another other ulama trying to give a more spiritual interpretation say, the salasil, the chains are chains of irada, the chains of desire. And Allah knew, because Allah created you. Allah knew. Even though on that day you said, Qalu bala. Yes, Allah, you are my Lord, which means I love you. I want you. You are everything in my life. Allah knew, even though you said that, most of us in this world would be liars. 
and let's do away the people who aren't Muslim. Let's think about the people who are Muslim. Many of the scholars, Ibn Ta'ala and others said, Ajiba, Allah is amazed by those who enter Jannah by salasil, by chains. What are the chains? The chains of desire. Allah knew you wouldn't really want him. Allah knew 17 times a day you say, Iyaka na'budu, Iyaka nasta'in. Where is Iyaka na'budu, Iyaka nasta'in? Iyaka na'budu, I want you. Iyaka nasta'in, through you. I can only do this through you. We're saying this 17 times a day. We're going down. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. God is greater than anything. We enter into the salah with Allahu Akbar. God is greater than anything. And Allah knew. Most of you wouldn't really want Allah. Most of you push comes to shab. Your tawheed. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, I said in the last khutbah, La ilaha illallah is a charter. It's a proclamation. It's not a realization until you get it. There are stages. Prophet ﷺ said there are stages to Iman. There are degrees to Iman. The aqal, the least of those is being a good guy. Taking the rubbish from the road. Removing something harmful from the road. The highest is realizing what La ilaha illallah is. Because La ilaha illallah is a love statement. Don't you get it? You are saying La ilaha. You've realized I don't want to revolve around anything else. I don't want my life to, my tawajjuh, my qibla. I don't want my qibla to be anything else than Allah. And that becomes true in your heart. But Allah said most people won't get it. And so from his love for you, his love preceded your love for him. He made you chains, chains that you would otherwise think you really want. And so the chains of khawf, fear from Jahannam, and the chains of Jannah. I will get to enjoy myself in Jannah. I will get the Hurul Ain. I will get happiness. I will get. And then when you arrive in Jannah, Allah says, Waladaina Mazid, we have more. And then He gives Himself to you. He lets you return back to that witnessing you had. Because that is what you really wanted. Every single thing you love without fail. If you can analyze yourself. And that's why when they go into analyze, and I'll end here, when they analyze, you see, Alcoholics Anonymous, which is one of the ways to, it's a group to defeat alcohol addiction, they have these things called 12 steps. And they're beautiful steps. One of the first things is to feel like, realize I'm an addict. <laughs> to say, I fall in this. I, be true to yourself. Be sidq. It's only when you can be sadiq that you can be true. Be true. I'm not here with la ilaha illallah. Don't fool yourself anymore. Don't fool yourself anymore. I, in my heart, I can see the idols there. I'm not going to fool anyone. I can see what I love other than Allah in my heart. Don't fool yourself with your beard. Don't fool yourself coming to the mosque. Don't fool yourself with your name. Don't fool yourself with your hajj. Don't fool yourself with Ramadan. Learn to be true. I have a problem. I'm an addict, the first of the 12 steps. And then it says, but turn yourself over to God. They say the 12 steps put forward by devout Christians, but sometimes the fitra tells you what's true. Turn yourself over to God. Really make isti'ana with Allah. Really turn yourself over to God, because Allah wants you to. He's put that in Surah Fatiha. He's made you say it 17 times a day. Hand yourself over to God. Really hand yourself over to God from the realization that you can't do it. And if you do that, you will find the madad. And if you find the mother, then the 12 step says, do an inventory. Realize where it is you're deluding. What is your addiction pointing to? What is your pattern? Your pattern, not that person's pattern. Your particular pattern pointing to. And then you can go. And then you can do what they did when they destroyed the, the idols because they returned back to the Fath al Mecca. You can return to the Fath of your heart and destroy the idols with Kul Ja al Haq wa Zahaq al Batil by bringing the Haq of La ilaha illallah to your heart each time and destroying the falsity. This is work we all have to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability of this. This is real addiction curing. And by the way, when we do this, then we're raising families and households because the children take from the parents. The children need to see the parents. What is it they really value? If we tell children, don't do this, don't do that, don't do drugs, but our lives are directed to other than Allah. Then what will they take? Islam failed with you. Why should I act upon it? So let's make it true in our hearts, let's make it true in our societies, let's make it true so we can be people who can bring the truth to the world.
وما ذلك على الله بعزيز والحمد لله رب العالمين هذا وسلوا وسلموا على خير البشر وأطيعوا ربكم فيما أمر فقد قال سبحانه وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ورضى الله عن الخلفاء راشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأنصار الصحابة الأكرمين اللهم انصرنا فإنك خير ناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير فاتهين واغفر لنا فإنك خير غافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا اللهم نسألك إيمانا دائما وقلبا خاشعا وعلما نافعا ويقينا صادقا ودين القيما والعافية من كل بلية وتمام العافية ودوام العافية والشكر على العافية وغنى عن الناس اللهم إنا نسألك التوبة الكاملة والمغفرة الشاملة والمحبة الجامعة والخلة الصافعة والمعرفة الواسعة والأنوار الصاطعة والشفاعة القائمة والحجة البالغة ودرجة العالية اللهم وفق رئيس الدولة الشيخ خليفة بن زايد كل خير واحفظه بحفظك وعنايتك ووفق اللهم نائب ولي أهده الأمين لما تحب وترضى وأيد إخوان حكام الأمراض اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم أرحم شيخ زايد وشيخ مختوم وشوخ الأمراض الذي انتقلوا إلى رحمتك اللهم أرحمهم رحمة واسعة من عندك وادخلهم الجنة يتنعمون فيها بغير حساب اللهم احفظ لدولة الإمارات استقرارها ورخاءها وبارك في خيراتها وأدم عليه السعادة والآمان وعلى سائر البلاد المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم انشر الاستقرار والسلام في بلدان المسلمين والعالم أجمعين اللهم اسقنا الغيث ولا تجعلنا من القانتين اللهم غثنا اللهم غثنا اللهم غثنا غيثا مغيثا هنيا واسعا شاملا اللهم اسقنا من بركات السماء وأنبت لنا من بركات الأرض ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة في الآخرة حسنة وقين عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والأحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعل